Yay, you made it! Week 24! Um, we are finishing up our study of earth science this week. And um, we are, so with our science, our first of the semester has been Psalm 24 1. The earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof. So the earth, including all the parts of the geosphere, um, help us to kind of stand back and be in awe um, and of worship of our Creator down to the depths of the dirt beneath our feet, the minerals that are naturally occurring from His design that are required for life, um, minerals that occur in the depths of our earth um, that are needed for plants to grow, for us to grow, for us to live. Um, and so that is the purpose of our study of science in, in a little more depth, is to worship the creator who designed it all with purpose. Um, these things are not just by accident. Um, minerals don't just happen to form the way we need them to, where we need them to. Um, they are designed um, with a reason. So today continues that awesomeness of our Lord um, as we study a compass. We do a compass walk. Um, so a lot of times you might just start, you know, who knows what a compass is? How does a compass work? Does anyone have any ideas? Um, the older kids might have some theories or thoughts behind that. We know in general knowledge that there's some magnetic pull of a compass to what direction? To our north, um, so to a geographic north. Um, so we're going to spend the first five to 10 minutes discussing how that happens and why. And as we discover that, it again, just for me, um, humbles me and just how God made even this magnetic field that I didn't know a whole lot about um, for a purpose. So um, for our visual, we're going to go back and use our week 20 geosphere drawing that we did. And what are the parts of the geosphere? We've got our core mantle crust, hydrosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere. Um, so as we look into the depths of the earth, we have the core. What is the core made out of? Um, well, the core is made out of molten liquid rock and metals, minerals. So we know rock is made up of minerals. So melted molten minerals floating around in there. Um, they believe that this magnetic field um, that comes from the earth comes from the outer core of the earth. In this outer core is a, um, a layer area of metallic liquid. Metals, mostly iron and nickel. Um, the iron and nickel, again, that's liquid, um, create a convection current. So if you can just imagine the core, just I imagine this is this rumbly convection, splashy liquid going everywhere. And that convection or movement of the metallic minerals um, create charged particles, which would make sense, metals rubbing against metals um, in a convection type movement create charged particles, which then are released into this magnetic field of the earth. So if you can picture, we're coming from the depths, the middle of the earth, and this, this charged particles are being released, and it creates, so here's the magnet. We've got our south and our north poles here of the magnet. Um, it creates this magnetic charged field coming out from the depths of the earth. As this magnetic charge or field comes out, it extends beyond the crust, extends beyond the atmosphere, clear out into the solar system on both, both directions. Um, and so as it gets out here, it is not super strong, but strong enough to do its job. Um, and again, it's, so if you can imagine, we're coming from here and it creates again this field permeating from the depths of the earth. Um, and so, we think, okay, that's cool. Well, it certainly helped us with navigation. Thank you, Lord, for that. Um, but it also, the magnetic field of the earth has even a bigger purpose in that as it sends out this charged magnetic field, these charged atoms into the atmosphere, 
those charged atoms trap and, um, I'm gonna say engulf, but repel, repel and trap charged particles coming from the sun. That if those charged particles were able to permeate and come into our atmosphere, they could um, destroy the balance that allows life on Earth. So this magnetic field is not just for fun and not just for navigation. It is also because God designed every thing in the earth for his glory and worship. And the magnetic field is just another layer of that. And so it has a bigger purpose in that, again, it repels, traps, charged particles coming from the sun that would um, destroy the balance that allows life on earth. And so I did not know that and thought that was really cool. So that is what the magnetic field is and where it comes from, okay? And that is a great review of the parts of the energy sphere. Now this magnetic field, if we picture it being like a magnet like this, a pole, um, has a, all magnets have a north and a south charge. Um, we know that opposite ends attract when it comes to magnets. So that's gonna be important. Um, when we do our compass. So the magnetic poles, I can't tell you, there you go. The magnetic poles in the earth, the magnetic south is actually in the north, geographic north of the earth. So again, the magnetic south is located in the geographic north um, or the upper part of the earth. Um, we're not going to get to a discussion about true north, but um, geographic north is a little different than true north because the earth is on a tilt. So that kind of makes everything a little off. Uh, but we're not going to the depths of that. So, but if someone were to ask, they are a little different. The north that the compass points to and true north are a little different. So, again, but that is important. Magnetic south pole is in our geographic north of the earth. Okay, all right, so we have our magnetic field. Um, let's see, okay, we got all that, okay, cool. So now we then talk about, so you've got magnetic field, parts of the geosphere, the purposes of the magnetic field, and then imagine the pole going through the earth, south magnetic pole equals geographic north. It's important. Okay, so then, um, many years ago, there is a naturally occurring mineral called lodestone. Lodestone is mostly made of the mineral magnetite, magnet, um, but not all magnetite is magnetized, okay? Um, magnetite can be attracted to other magnets, but it itself, the mineral is not magnetized. But lodestone, mostly most made of magnetite, but some other things, it is the only naturally occurring magnetized mineral. So it is this stone, this rock that you can find in the ground and it is like a naturally occurring magnet. So many years ago, they found that this lodestone, when it was floating in water, would turn toward geographic north. Um, and so that, became the first compass. The Chinese were the first that we know of to really use this lodestone floating in water to help them determine direction. And so that was the first compass that was used. So two important parts of that first compass we still use today. One is a magnetic directional tool. They use lodestone. We used a magnetized metal um, and then it has to be kind of free flowing or very pivotal. It can't be secured in one spot, it has to be able to move. And so they floated it in water, which some compasses still use today. So those are two very important parts of a compass. One, a magnetized directional thing, and then it has to be kind of free floating or free moving, pivotal, okay? So the lodestone, naturally occurring by the Lord, Magnetized mineral was the first to use. Then they found that it attracts iron. And so things that are made of iron 
can be magnetized by rubbing against another magnet or rubbing against lodestone. Um, rubbing against, but now these days we can rub it against magnets. So you can take like a sewing needle, rub it against a magnet. There's methods to do this and you can make that sewing needle its own little magnetized pointer and make your own compass. That's another day, but something fun to do at home. So, um, so in a compass, again, we said we need that magnetized metal in the middle, which is our directional pointer, and we need it to be free floating rather in water or just in a very soft pivotal point. So I'm going to have kids in our community on week 23. I'm gonna tell parents, whoever has a compass to bring it with them. We will also use the compass app in the iPhone or if someone has one on their Android. Um, and I'll explain real briefly how that works too. So in our compass, we have a magnetized metal, um, mostly of iron. The more iron content that's in the metal, the higher or the better it usually holds its magnetism. And so we have this magnetized metal inside, okay? And it's free floating so it can move and tell us the direction. Well, how does it point to geographic north? If I turn my compass, that's kind of hard to do up there, but if I turn my compass and I face different directions, that little point in the middle moves, right? So how does it always go to the north? Well, let's go back. We know we have this magnetic field. We have the pole magnet coming through the, from the core of the earth. We know the south geometric pole, or sorry, south magnetic pole is in our geographic north. Well then a magnet, oh, I mess it's with my compass. The magnet, we know magnets opposites attract. So a magnet's going to point, its northern end is going to point toward the south part of the Earth's magnetic field. Ah, sorry, that was loud. The Earth's magnetic field. Because south and north combine. And so the south magnetic field pulls on the north part of our compass. And so then we just, they label the compass um, accordingly. So the N is our geographic north, but actually the southern magnetic pole. Cool, right? So it always points north because opposites attract. And the north magnet in our compass is pointing to the south magnetic pole of the earth. So it will always point north because of that. Opposites attract. Okay. All right. So we know how our compass works. And so then we will get to play with our compass. And um, just real briefly, the app on the phone. Um, iPhones and the apps have a magnometer, magnometer, magnometer inside of them which can um, also work on the magnetic field of the earth. And so they work a little differently than an actual magnet itself, but they can read electronically um, the magnetic field to determine direction as well as lots of other things too, but for our purposes, direction. So they work and they are a legit compass, um, except they have to be charged. Okay, so we know how it works. For our purposes, we will have, I will have a couple paths and your compass walk will include something like walk 20 steps north, walk three steps west, and you'll use your compass and turn and take those instructions. At the end will be a little prize for all the students. And as you gather around your little prize, I want you to sit everybody down and for the last two minutes, talk about Proverbs 16, 9, which says, A man's heart plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. So even throughout life, as we often make our own plans, we make our own directions, God's way 
when our heart is, when we have Christ in our life, he will always point us back north. He will always draw us back to him if we're willing to listen, to humble ourselves, and to be obedient to his calling. So um, for all of you homeschool families out there, I want to encourage you to stay the course that the Lord has called you to do. Um, he will bless you. He will encourage you. He will strengthen you. Um, and so just as our compass always points north because of his creation, um, he can always point us back to him if we're willing to open our minds and hearts to listen. Have a great time and um, happy break.